this voice inside of me saying, you can't do this. You don't have everything it takes. I shut up. I have got to do it. You get scared sometimes. Some people you will allow to unnerve you. That's why you've got to learn to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to stand up inside yourself. I might not get to say everything I want to say. I got to hold my peace sometimes. Sometimes I got to bite my lip. Sometimes I've got to learn another discipline. Sometimes I got to bleed. I'm willing to bleed a little while to be better for a long time. Now, if I didn't have the surgery, the pain would never go away. And if I had the surgery, the pain of recovery will go away. Are you willing to have a little momentary discomfort to be where you are called to be? Or are you willing to be a prisoner in your own life the rest of your life? I don't know how you feel about poverty, but that got on my nerves. And homeless is a whole nother level of poverty. So I ain't got no phone, I ain't got no backyard. That pushed me towards my faith. I had lost my faith, man. I thought God wasn't listening. He was listening. I just wasn't asking for nothing. And he was available for me the whole time. It's just I wasn't checking in with him. God ain't turned his back on you. You walked away from him. He always there. When I turned around and started talking to him, I said, if you let me make it, when I get there, I'm going to tell everybody it was you. When you honor God, it stirs up the enemy. It will stir up jealousy, resentment, anger, critical spirits in people that don't honor God. It's not so much they don't like you, they don't like the blessing and favor that's on your life. The good news is they cannot stop what God has ordained. God being for you is more powerful than any force that is against you. He has you in the palm of his hand. Nothing can snatch you away. You may get thrown into a furnace, but God can make you fireproof. He controls the universe. These teenagers weren't worried. They weren't panicking. They said to the king, we know our God will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down. When you have a made up mind like that, God, I'm believing that you're going to keep me from this trouble, that this door will open, that these people will treat me right. But even if it doesn't go my way, I'm still not going to get discouraged. I'm still not going to complain. I'm still going to give you praise. That kind of attitude cannot be defeated. The king was so furious. He had the guards heat up the furnace seven times hotter than normal. They already had a big problem. It already didn't look good. Now the fire was hotter than ever. Sometimes God will let the odds be against you in a greater way on purpose. So when he turns things around, it's a bigger miracle. So everyone will see his favor on your life. The guards tied up the teenagers, bound their hands and feet, and threw them into the furnace. They fell to the ground. It was so hot that the guards were instantly killed. King Nebuchadnezzar was watching from a distance. He noticed the three Hebrew teenagers stood up. He couldn't believe it. He said to his staff, didn't we throw three men in bound? I see four men loose and one looks like the son of God. He ran over to the furnace window and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God. A few minutes earlier, he didn't believe in the Most High God. Sometimes your problems is so God can change other people's minds. God can see the big picture and he'll use you to demonstrate his power, his favor, his blessing, so others will believe. They walked out of the fire. Everyone gathered around. Verse 21 says, They noticed not a hair on their head was singed. None of their clothing was burned. They didn't even smell like smoke. God knows how to bring you out of difficulties to where you don't look like what you've been through. Nobody would ever know you've been through the trouble, through the sickness, through the breakup, through the pandemic. You're so blessed, happy, healthy, fulfilled, generous. Nobody can tell you were ever in the fire. You don't even have the smell of smoke. Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 28, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now he's worshiping the God he didn't believe in a few hours before. This could be the end of the story. God protected these teenagers. God changed the mind of the king. That's all a great miracle. But verse 30 says, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to much higher positions in Babylon. Hidden in that problem was promotion. They couldn't see it at the time. God, this king's coming against us. God, these people at work are not fair. Dealing with this sickness. I had a setback in my finances. We would be grateful 
if God just brought us out. But what I want us to see is there is promotion attached to the problem. God is not going to just bring you out, but that difficulty is setting you up for new levels. Even with this pandemic, in a sense, we're all in a problem. There's uncertainty, work is disrupted, people fighting illnesses, things have slowed down. God is not going to just bring you out, but there is promotion in the pandemic. God wouldn't let the whole world be impacted just to get us back where we were. Greater things are coming. New doors are going to open. Family members that are off course are going to turn around. Areas you've struggled in year after year, there's going to be supernatural breakthrough. Chains are being loosed. Like these teenagers, the big problem means God has big favor coming. Big blessings. Big influence. I keep doing the right thing. Don't bow down to compromise. Don't give in to doubt, fear. It's never going to happen. No, God's going to do something that not only amazes you, but other people are going to see the goodness of God on your life. Like Nebuchadnezzar, they're going to acknowledge that you serve the Most High God. How did it happen? Through a problem. Don't complain about the problem. The problem has a purpose. And the problem has promotion. Psalm 66 says, We went through the fire and through the flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. See, you have to go through the fire, through the flood, to get to the abundance. On the other side of the fire, you'll see promotion. On the other side of that closed door, you'll see your compact center. On the other side of that sickness, you'll see greater favor, greater anointing, greater ministry, like my mom. Don't get stuck in the fire. How did this happen? I don't understand it, Joel. I was doing the right thing. No, the right attitude is, I may be in this fire, but I know it's only temporary. It looks like a setback, but I know it's a setup. Abundance is coming. Healing is coming. Favor is coming. This is what happened with the Israelites. They were at a dead end at the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army was chasing them. They had nowhere to go. They were praying, God, deliver us. Do something. Don't let us be recaptured. The scripture says, a strong east wind began to blow. That was a nice way of saying a storm was coming. They were already in a problem, about to be recaptured. What did God do? Send them another problem. Dark clouds started rolling in. Thunder started roaring. Debris was hurling through the air. I'm sure they thought, man, just our luck. We're already in this problem. Now bad weather. Now this storm is going to kill us. What they didn't realize is that east wind, that storm they thought would stop them, was sent by God to blow back the Red Sea. to force those waters to open up so they could go through on dry ground. The storm was a part of the miracle. 
The storm was what not only going to bring them out, but the storm was going to defeat their enemies. God had a purpose for their problem. They couldn't see it at the time. Maybe the east wind is blowing in your life. You're asking God to help you. Seems like the problem is getting worse. You don't see how it can work out. You're tempted to live discouraged, overwhelmed. You don't know what God is up to. His ways are not our ways. What you think is another storm, another problem, can be what God uses to make a way, to open a path, to do something that you've never seen. We don't like the storms. Thunder is loud. Things are blowing around. But God is in control of the winds. He's in control of your circumstances. God sent these strong east winds not to harm them, but to blow back the waters. What looks like it's going to defeat you, God is going to use to move you forward. Like these people, you're going to look back and say, wow, that east wind wasn't what I thought. That storm looked like it's going to stop me, but God used it to promote me. God is going to do something that you're not expecting. You didn't see it coming. Suddenly your health turns around. Suddenly that door opens. Suddenly the right person shows up. You've been through the fire, through the flood. Now get ready for abundance. Enemies that have been chasing you are being defeated. Depression, addictions, trouble at work, health issues. That storm is coming to an end. You're going to see the hand of God doing unusual, uncommon things. Because you trust Him in the trouble, I believe and declare He's about to rescue you. You're going to have favor in the fire, promotion in the pandemic, strength in the storm. When you see what God does, you will give Him great glory.